Tonight, Microsoft announces Windows 10, and eBay and PayPal are splitting up. What's going on? We'll tell you. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 183 for Tuesday, September 30th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TECHNIGHT. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and welcome to Tech News Tonight. It's a pretty big day for Microsoft, so we thought, since she was already in the studio on Windows Weekly for a very special episode, and kind of to kick off the show, we have live in person Mary Jo Foley, who is the co host here, of course, of Windows Weekly here on Twit, also writes for ZDNet on her blog, All About Microsoft. Hi, Mary Jo. Hi, Sarah. It's good to have you in person. Thank you very much. Never did this before, not I you know. and me, anyway. True. Jason Howell got you on Friday when I wasn't around, so true. Well, that's what you get. When you're not <laughs> around. So let's talk about Windows 10. First of all, it was it was this latest version of, of of Windows has been codenamed Threshold for some time. We've all been talking about it as Windows 9 is coming. Windows 9 is coming. What's going on with the naming convention? Yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not as upset about this as some people are. Everyone's people like, why are, are they skipping nine? It. Oh yeah, people are in an uproar over them skipping wow. over nine. Uproar. Uproar. Okay. Yep. But um, there's no reason to be in an uproar. It's meant to signify there's a departure, that mm. they're doing things differently. It's probably the last major release of Windows. And after that, they're doing incremental releases, kind of like what Apple does. Okay. So, yeah, that's that's what's going on. So it's just sort of like round number, makes more sense. Big looks, bang. Looks better. Right. Like Windows 9 or Windows 10. Windows 10 just feels more momentous, right? Well, okay. So if this is the next major release and if they're if they're going to be incremental uh, improvements and, and, and enhancements made to the operating system, of course, well, then what do they call it? Is it just Windows? Because it's it's supposed to encompass yeah. really everything that Microsoft does going forward, right? right? Mobile, desktop, yep. that sort of thing. Yep. They're still going to call it Windows 10. So whether it's on an embedded okay. device, a phone, a server, Xbox even... Mm -hmm. Still Windows 10. As somebody who primarily uses Apple products, would it annoy you to have someone like me say, well, OS 10, doesn't it make comparisons to OS 10 and why would Microsoft want that? Yeah, that annoys me, but everything about Apple annoys me. <laughs> so yeah, I, it does annoy me, but I, I think it was a really good choice because I think if they did Windows 9, people would say, yeah, it's just more of Windows 8 continued and mm -hmm. it's not. It's a whole different operating system that brings back the good things from Windows 7 and advances the things from Windows 8 that people did like. Okay, so it, it, it's it's the company has described Windows 10 as being a, a, its most comprehensive operating system. Mm -hmm. Okay, besides the fact that it's going to take the best from what people already like from Windows and, and, and get rid of some of the stuff that maybe wasn't working, what do you think are the big highlights? What should people expect? So that's hard to answer because... Tomorrow we're going to get a technical preview of this, mm -hmm. and it's very, very early. So it's definitely not all the features, not even all of the user interfaces there yet. But I think the things people should look for are, does it make it easier to navigate? Does it feel more familiar if you're a Windows 7 user and you can not, like, freak out when you see it? And mm -hmm. you can just, without a tutorial or without a long explanation, figure out how to do things. Yeah. Do you, uh, what are, what is the latest on um, people who are on various older operating systems being able to upgrade to Windows 10 for free? We don't know. We asked that Nobody today. knows. No, we asked. Uh, and you know what? Because my, you were at the, uh, I was event at the event that was in San Francisco earlier this morning. Right. And everybody asked about pricing and they just didn't have anything to say yet. But my, my guess is if you're a Windows 8 user, you're going to be able to upgrade for free to Windows 9 uh, and 10. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, see? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Gotta have to get. Gotta get tra retrained. Were my you brain. surprised this morning when they said it's Windows 10? Did you have I did you have ideas or? Um, you know, there were so many like guesses and rumors floating around. I, Tom Warren from The Verge and I were guessing last Friday it was Windows X, uh -huh. so we were close. Right. If you think X is 10. Yeah. Right? True. True. Yeah. That's the and then it's sort of the tie into the yeah. Xbox that sort of thing. Right. So all right. So the 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 preview the the public preview. Yep. Technical preview. Technical yep. preview uh, launches tomorrow, October first. Yep. Um, how if people want to get their hands on it, even though mm -hmm. it's not going to be exactly as right. baked as it will be when it's fully ready, what do they do? 
They should go to preview.windows.com tomorrow. We don't know exactly what time. And you're going to sign up for something called the Insiders uh, program, I think, Windows Insiders. If you agree to take that program on, you can get the bits. You're going to get um, a link where you're going to get direct feedback from Microsoft. So you can give your feedback, and they're going to send you feedback. And uh, you're going to be able to kind of uh, have a lot more influence on what the product looks like as it goes forward. Do you think Windows 10 is the right not not just the name, yep. uh, but because we'll all get used to that easily. <laughs> but but do you think that the changes that have been rumored and that you expect is Microsoft moving in the right direction? Yes, hundred percent. Yes. All right. Well, you heard it here, Mary Jo Foley. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for being here, yeah. Mary Jo, co-host so of Windows me. Weekly with Paul Throughout and of course Leo Laporte, usually airing on. Wednesdays. Wednesdays. You had a special uh, episode today that if uh, if you're uh, watching the live version of uh, of today's Twit programming and you missed the show, definitely check it out because it, uh, it was a good time. They're not always in studio. We even had some lunch. We did. Thanks for being here, Mary Jo. Thank you. All right. After the break, we're going to talk about something a little different. Kyle Russell, uh, who's a writer over at TechCrunch, is going to join me. We're going to talk a little bit about PayPal and eBay and why their matrimony may be ending. But first, we want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, of course, is the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. Squarespace has new features, new designs. Have you hung out on the design page recently? There's some beautiful templates to get you started. A logo creator tool can help you as if you're an individual or maybe you're running a small business and you might not have a huge amount of resources. You can create a really nice, simple identity for yourself. Squarespace has a lot of really cool features like that. Also, if you're ever wondering, I'm not exactly sure how I do this. Maybe I, I I would like a feature and I'm not sure if you have it. They've got a live chat and email support 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And there's a customer help site for easier access to articles and even video workshops. It's inexpensive. Squarespace plans start at just $8 a month. And that includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year. So Squarespace is really, it is your identity online. It's the whole package. It's also mobile ready in this day and age not only will your website viewers be visiting your site and a variety of different tablets and mobile phones and, and, and different size screens, but you want to access your website in a variety of different ways too. There's a Squarespace metric app that allows you to check your site stats, site stats, page views, that sort of thing. The blog app helps you make text updates, tap and drag images, change layouts, monitor comments. That's all on the go. Squarespace has really beautiful code as well. And they take care of the hosting. So you don't have to. Once you've got a Squarespace site, you don't have to worry about all of that day-to-day -day checking in and making sure everything's right under the hood because that's what Squarespace does so well already. You can start a free two-week trial with no credit card just start building your website two weeks you got a got a 100 free trial when you decide to sign up for squarespace make sure to use the offer code tech night that's t-e-c-h-n-i-g-h-t and get 10 percent off and that way you can show your support for tech news tonight as well i've been using squarespace for years and years many different designs i've kind of i'm kind of in a minimal design but that was straight from one of the squarespace templates i did not make that myself i just changed a couple of colors so you know, there you go. Thanks so much to Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. A better web awaits you, and it starts with your new Squarespace website. All right, joining us now to talk about that whole eBay PayPal thing is Kyle Russell, a writer over at TechCrunch. Hey, Kyle. Hi, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. So, all right, I've been sort of teasing this whole thing. Today, eBay basically announced that PayPal is spinning off and that both of the companies will uh, live on as separate entities, publicly traded companies, in 2015. So uh, there has been pressure from investors. Activist investor Carl Icahn basically demanded that eBay do this, I don't know, some months ago, I think about nine months ago. Why do you think the two companies have decided to split now? Well, I think that the environment now is a little bit different in the payment space than it was nine months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, we were all kind of talking about uh, Apple jumping into payments as a theoretical thing that they could do. It was expected to happen sometime late this year. Turned out those rumors were correct, but the pressure wasn't there nine months ago. And I think now it is. Um, I think that eBay is looking at payments business. It sees that while PayPal is doing well, I mean, it had like six and a half billion dollars in revenue last year, was growing by a fifth year over year, you know, that's a big ship to manage along with 
you know, dealing with your own things that's a separate, you know, industry. Like, I think that it's, things got more complicated. They see that PayPal is, you know, a big on its own and it, they'd be better for both of them to be able to focus on their own priorities. I always thought it was somewhat of an odd acquisition when PayPal went under the eBay umbrella. Of course, you know, payments are a big part of how people are, you know, buying and selling and auctioning and that's how eBay works. So that... That part of it makes sense to me. Does it change anything for eBay, you think, going forward when PayPal no longer becomes something that eBay can control? Well, I mean, eBay transactions were already only about 29% of uh, PayPal's overall volume. And it's expected, you know, Morningstar predicts that in three years that could drop down to 15. So overall, the actual relationship between them wasn't you know, the tie between them wasn't exactly important to PayPal in the grand scheme of things. It was becoming less so over time as it became more and more general purpose. As far as e eBay goes, I think that payments are becoming um, not easier, but I mean, when they've been in that space themselves for so long, I think that they're a little bit less worried about needing to rely on them. So while I'm sure that they'll probably be partners going forward for a long time, I wouldn't be surprised also to see eBay, you know, roll its own systems, especially if Bitcoin, which it's saying it'll support one day. And like, if those things actually become mainstream, maybe eBay you know, won't have to rely on any services like that at all. Yeah, PayPal has such brand recognition, uh, but I know that a lot of people who have, have, have known and loved PayPal and, and now have a lot of other options that have cropped up over the years, you know, PayPal sometimes is thought of as kind of, eh, it's, a, it's the old web way of doing things. It, it, uh, it, it's sort of been left to languish a bit. Now you've got something like Apple Pay and there are, you know, there's, there's companies like Amazon and there's Square and mobile payment is a very hot space. How much do you think that some of these, well, let's not call Apple a startup, but some of the more startup models plus something like Apple Pay, which is getting a lot of attention, even though it's not even in operation yet, um, prompted the split between eBay and PayPal? Well, you know, as I mentioned previously, uh, I think that the circumstances have changed a lot in the last couple of months. Now that we know Apple Pay is a thing, uh, I think mobile payments are going to be incredibly invigorated over the next year or so, um, especially also because, you know, the chip and pin uh, regulations that are coming up, people are going, or retailers are going to have to implement things like NFC, or they'll have new stations that allow for things like NFC. So things like Google Wallet, Apple Pay will take off. And it'll be interesting to see where PayPal fits into that space. They have the partnership with Samsung where, you know, you use the equivalent of Apple's Touch ID on the Samsung Galaxy S5 uh, to make a payment and it's PayPal that handles it. Uh, the fact that competitors like Stripe, Square, Amazon are all coming into the space at once, I think will do a lot to reinvigorate PayPal also in that, you know, assuming that this, they go public and they have a lot more cash to work with and freedom, it's going to be interesting to see how they take on. Who are they going to go for? One of these competitors? Are they going to say, "Hey, we want to move into you know Square's space now that we have like hundreds of millions, however many billions to play with?" Um, it'll be interesting to see if it tries to step into other territories or kind of lock in what it's you know known best for, being like the universal you know payment system across the web. Yeah, you mentioned Google. Um, not that I have any insider information into how interested Google might be in something like PayPal, but how much do you think that PayPal could be ripe for an acquisition from one of these larger companies that could really uh, use a good partnership like this? Well, Google's a good example because, you know, with Google Wallet, they've been trying for years to get into mobile payments, especially like using NFC to do things in person. Mm -hmm. um, so, with, yeah, it's not crazy to say like, oh, maybe they would need PayPal. But there's also, you know, other players in the space that, could probably use a little help. Um, what comes to mind is Microsoft. Uh, you know, now that Nokia is going to be absorbed into Microsoft proper and they're going to be making their own Lumia phones, you know, it's going to be expected that you have something like Google Wallet or Apple Pay. Maybe they could roll their own. Microsoft is certainly big enough to accomplish something like that, but it might be useful to have experience coming in from someone like PayPal. Kyle Russell writes over at TechCrunch. Thanks so much for joining us, Kyle, and let folks know where they can keep up with what you do. I am at Kyle B. Russell on Twitter, and you can find my stuff on TechCrunch every day. Excellent. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you.
All right, finally, uh, it's a little bit of an interesting story, kind of a happy go, uh, you know, go community type of a story. Reddit, have you heard of it? It's pretty fun. Reddit has raised $50 million in a Series B round of funding, which puts the sort of self-proclaimed front page of the internet, a $500 million valuation. Okay, but here's a twist. The company plans to give back 10% of this latest round's equity, which is a lot of money, back to the community. Now, they haven't specifically described exactly how this will be done, but Reddit CEO Yishan Wang says he's thinking about creating a new cryptocurrency that would be shared somehow with Reddit members and that Reddit investors have already explicitly agreed to to, to agree to this in their investment terms. Wang does say that this is still an early stage effort, though. So, again, there are some details to be worked out, but kind of interesting now also this is a pretty big community we're talking about reddit currently gets 5 billion monthly page views 115 million uniques each month so that's a lot of folks that are getting a little cryptocurrency that might not even exist yet according to the company blog post the funding will go towards staff expansion for product development community management and better tools around moderation and community Community, community. It's really kind of the Reddit buzzword, isn't it? Well, I'm out of buzzword. So that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. Thanks so much for doing that, by the way, because we love your feedback and we want to know what you like, don't like, what works and doesn't. And don't miss our morning news program. That's Tech News Today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.